Greetings, Princeps, and welcome to the first ever God Engine cast, a podcast dedicated to discussing the Adeptus Titanicus war game produced by Games Workshop. You are listening to the remastered version of this, the first ever episode of the God Engine cast. This episode was first published in February 2020, and in April of 2021, I started going back to revisit these previous episodes to tighten up the recordings and include new content and remove content that had become somewhat dated. So in this episode, I talk about who I am, what I collect, what I was currently working on in my hobby section when I put this episode together, and finally, some conversations about a trip I'd taken to Oklahoma City just before I recorded this episode. Sit back and enjoy this first episode, and uh, please understand, this was the first time I sat down and recorded a show like this. And uh, now let's move on to talk about some news. It's actually been pretty quiet the last couple of weeks since the large release we had at the start of the month. And the only news that comes close to Titanicus is the release of the new Imperial Aeronautica stuff. I expect this will be dropping early next month. And at the New York Toy Fair last weekend, Games Workshop previewed the Avengers Strike Fighters. Another cool model in the smaller scale. And I really like it. And I expect we'll see some on the tables of Titanicus being used to show variety of assets. Further within Games Workshop news itself, we have the release of the Horus Heresy Book Malevolence in paperback, which is a good read and relevant to Titanicus players in places. And similarly, next weekend is the Black Library celebration at all Games Workshop stores. And I'm sure there are a few stories going up that will reference Titans, though I haven't really dug into them to see what stories there are. As a community, we're still all dealing with the new releases we had at the start of the month. Across Reddit and Facebook, the continual debate I've seen occur is the presence of the Upgrade Kit label on the Psy Titan boxes. Those who are unaware, beginning this week when people started receiving their Psy Titans, they were receiving the product in two boxes. The first box is the standard Warlord Titan with Plasma Annihilator kit. The second box is labelled as a Psy Titan Upgrade Kit and is in the standard Forge World box. This reignited hope with many that perhaps Forgeworld would release this as a separate kit in the future. I personally think this is unlikely. It's not Forgeworld style, and many of their other big kits come similarly packaged. But Games Workshop have surprised us before, and maybe in a year or two we'll see it as a separate release, which I think would be welcomed by the community as a whole. Well, at this point, I will depart into a conversation about where I think the hobby is going. This is from my baseline views, so we can reference them in the future. In the short term, I think we're going to see two or three new books by the end of this year. I'm not 100% sure on what the topics would be, but I reckon the Schism of Mark Mars is highly likely to be one of the books. I suspect the next book will have the Titan Legions that we saw decals being released for in the previous release. But I'm not sure we're going to see another Titan this year. Well, not a whole new Titan like we saw with the Nemesis Warbringer. I suspect we're going to see a second Nemesis Warbringer box. Similar to the Wall of Titan, it will drop with the uh, Volcano Cannon attached, and maybe different arm weapons rounding out the selection that you can take with the Nemesis. I then further expect additional Forge World weapon kits for the t- existing Titans. Maybe addition- addition- different car pace weaponry for the Nemesis, and probably additional weaponry for the Warlord. There are still several weapons from the old Epic game that haven't made it across yet. And I'm not just talking about the Assault Claws, I'm talking about the additional Missile Racks, and a few other unique weapons. Though I doubt we're going to see the Corvus Assault pod anytime soon. It's just weird. What I do expect to see a lot of is knights. We have a lot of knight models that we have rules for, that we do not have models for, and there are many models in 40k that do not have a Titanicus equivalent yet, and they'll be a pretty easy port for Games Workshop to produce. Looking beyond the year, I suspect we aren't going to see a huge deviation from the standard model of Titanicus for the next five years. I am firmly in the camp that does not believe Games Workshop is going to do Xenos models anytime soon. While it would be the least biggest change, unlike switching to an epic system, I just do not think they have the time to put in to build the equivalent ranges. Not when you compare the release schedule to the other specialist games. Now, maybe in in four or so years we'll see 
dropping of orcs. Maybe in an Ulanor campaign, but maybe something closer to the present. But I suspect this will be after we fully fleshed out all the chaos variants that are possible during the Horus Heresy. I even firmer believe that we are not going to see an epic release. I just don't see it being on the cards for Gaming Workshop at any point in their current plan. Back when Epic was released, 40k was a lot closer to the Game of Kill team we have now than it is to the 40k game we have now. And Epic represented the games that we now play in Apocalypse. Or at least, similar enough, that you can play a version of Epic with the Apocalypse rules. I also believe if Epic was on the cards, we would have seen a different Aeronautica release. The basis those models come with are very specialised to the game of Aeronautica, and I very much doubt they'll be releasing them again with a different set of bases. At least, not in the short term. Right then, now that about covers my views, and like I say, if you want to have your two cents and tell me where I'm wrong, please email me. I enjoy emailing other podcasts, and I'm sure there are people out there who'll enjoy emailing me. But feel free to contact me about any of the content anywhere in the show. I'm more than happy to hear any feedback. This is the section of the show, which will normally be the time I talk about the hobby stuff I've been up to lately. As this is the first show, I thought it would take the time to talk about myself and what I've been up to in this hobby, both Titanicus and other war games, um, throughout the entirety of my hobbying life. Well, I got into the hobby in 1998, when my parents brought me for Christmas the second edition Warhammer 40,000 box set, the one with the cardboard dreadnought and all the plastic orcs. It was a good game. Um... For the next seven years, though, I continued to collect everything. Uh, played nearly every game Games Workshop produced. I say nearly. Didn't play Epic. Uh, never was able to find anyone wanting to get into it. Models weren't really that available in the small stores in my hometown. Um, though I did play an excessive amount of the Epic video game Final Liberation. Um, Two-player skirmish and the uh, campaigns. The uh, campaign was a little rough, but it was good fun. Um, the videos for that game are still available on YouTube, and you should really go and hunt them out. Uh, they are very 90s and something delightful, especially the scene with the Titan. So, seven years later, I was about to head to university. I had a close-knit group of friends I played Warhammer with, um, and d and um, but I had a large collection of Orcs, Chaos, Imperial Guards for 40k, and um, a number of armies of chaos for Warhammer Fantasy and a Vampire Counts collection. Um, I'd been involved in the first, some of the first campaigns Games Workshop ever ran. I remember distinctly picking up the Third Ward for Armageddon Codex from the Games Workshop store in Glasgow on a family holiday. Um, I think I even played a game there. It was great. Um, anyway. When I went off to university, I was never able to find a regular playgroup. I moved down to London for my hometown in the Midlands of England, um, and just got distracted with other hobbies, and slowly I stopped playing. I played every time I went back home, but never really when I was down in London. So eventually I started selling my hobby stuff off, and pretty intensively in 2010, just before I moved to the United States. Well, just after I moved to the United States, about a year and a half later, I found myself working out on a drilling rig in western Oklahoma. I was stuck away from home weeks at a time, uh, occasionally the odd month. Um, I was getting pretty bored out there because I was a good three hours drive from the nearest city, um, right there on the border with Texas. So my wife t- talks me into getting back into the hobby. So she picks me up a box of space marines and some paints, and I take back to it pretty strongly. Um, within two or three years, I had a bigger collection than anything I had back in the UK. Um, I had like a 5,000 point Iron Warriors army for 40k, a 3,000 point Warhammer Fantasy Vampire Counts army, and then slowly picked up a um, Korn army for Age of Sigmar when Age of Sigmar came out. But what I was avoiding were the specialist games. Never wanted to get into them. I could never guarantee when I could get games in, so I was sticking to the primary games. And this was true for Titanicus. Uh, I looked at it when it dropped. I thought the Grandmaster set was too expensive, and no one seemed to want to be playing it. Um, But that did change. About a year ago, when Titan Death was released, I was up at my Oklahoma City Games Workshop store, which is the closest Games Workshop store to my house, uh, even if it is a three-hour drive. Um, I was playing a small game of Age of Sigma, about 3,500 points, if I recall, uh, with one of my friends, and he just picked up the Titan Death book. 
Well, we spent some time reading it that day, and I just couldn't put it down. Um, it was everything I wanted out of a Warhammer 40,000 game. I'd been pretty disillusioned with 7th edition. I'd not really enjoyed 40k since 5th edition, really. It had moved away from the, the gothicness of 3rd of second edition that I'd gone into. And there's something about Titanicus that calls back to that golden age. So anyway, I made a couple of deals and sold off my vampire accounts. Uh, with the money I'd been able to acquire, I brought myself the uh, um, Titan Battle Group box set, uh, the core rules, and a couple of buildings. And then I got into a campaign. Uh, we ran a six-week campaign in Oklahoma, and it was great. Um, and from then on, it has been the game I've tried to play every time I've been around someone who wants to play it. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. So that's who I am. So let's touch on my actual current collection. Well, after picking up the Battle Group box set, I brought myself a second Reaver and had planned that would be my whole collection. I spent a lot of time doing research about which Titan Legion I wanted. And after umming and ahhing, and the fact that a couple of my friends who took Legios I also would have liked, I settled on Legio Incarnum. I've always liked Legio Incarnum. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm an Iron Warriors player in 40k, and the hazard stripes they have warm my heart. But also Incarnum appear in the Storm of Iron, uh, one of the fan fantastic 40k books. Um, Iron Warriors versus a whole pile of guard and some Imperial Fists. Um, and Incarnum show up to fight the Legio Mortis, and it's a great bit of Titan fighting and... Incarnum have always had a special place in my heart because of that, their inclusion in that book. Um, so I settled with that, and I decided I would just do the Axiom Mana Pole, and that's all I was going to collect. And that lasted, like, two weeks, and I started buying other Titans. Um, I got a pile of Titans now. I say a pile. I've probably got two Axiom Mana Poles and a lot of Knights. In fact, let's just quickly run through them. So I have 12 Questorus Knights. They're all painted, all but three... Need transfers to be applied and then sealant. Um, I've got four Knight Lancers. They need transfers. And I've got four Acastas. They also were fully painted and need transfers. Uh, but I hate getting them out. That's another topic for another time, I think, though. Um, I have two Warlord Titans. One I finished painting this weekend. <laughs> the other is primed and not really ready for the table. All its armor plates are still off. And I've just got to do a lot of work with it. And having just finished the first Warlord, I'm going to take my time before I come and paint him. Now I do have all the magnetized weapons for my Warlord Titans, including all of the resin ones. With the exception of the macro gat Carpe Scatling guns, I do not like the look of those guns. I need to decide how I'm going to do them. I'm probably just going to have to buy the Forge Wolf ones when I've got the money, but I just... There's something about them. Aesthetically, I just don't... It's just not me. Now I have five Reavers. Two have been fully painted. And even sealed. Um, but with the new Legio and Carnum transfers, I'm really going to have to put some of those decals on and then put another round of sealant. Uh, make my heart skip a beat if it frosts or something. Ugh. Anyway, um, I have three other Reavers in the process of being painted. Um, they're a Titan I go to and put a bit of paint on whenever I'm bored. Um, so I just need to sit down and get them done one day. Um, all my Reavers are not magnetized. Um, same as my hounds. I've got four warhounds, um, two of which have been almost finished. Finished them about three weeks ago. Um, they need decals and then a sealant. Uh, the two others have just been primed, uh, bare silver. But I've got a problem with them. I, I tried to texture the base with a bit of milliput. Milliput still hasn't set almost a year later. Um, so I need to decide what I'm going to do about that. Um, it's a bit of a pain, to be honest. Thankfully, it is the small circle bases, so I probably can just pop the Warhounds off and find new bases in my base box. We'll see. Now, as I mentioned, I have not magnetized my Reavers or my Hounds. I hate magnets. <laughs> well, I hate the magnetizing process. It's just clunky. I always get something wrong. The pieces don't fit right, and I can't create quite as dynamic pose as I can with a bit of glue. So, given the price point of the Reavers and the Warhounds, for me at least, I felt I could afford more titans than paying for the magnets and the time it would take me to make a good mo good looking model so i'm going to pick up some more warhounds eventually to get the other weapon combinations though at the moment i have one with a dual tur turbo laser one with dual plas and then two with plas bolter because i'm an original now when i get a warbringer i'm going to have to magnetize it i cannot justify buying multiple versions of that kit uh, to the number that I'd need to get all the combinations of weapons I want. 
Uh, also, I do not think there's going to be a mana pool that allows me to run five Warbringers. There is for the Reavers, um, so that's fun, and I do enjoy the Corsair. It is, in my opinion, the second best mana pool available. Though we'll discuss that at another time. Uh, finally, in my Titanicus collection, I have a pile of scenery. I find the Sylvester Imperialis scenery to be the best kit Game Shortshot makes, or at least the one I enjoy building the most. Last year was pretty dark for me, had a lot going on in my life, and I'd find myself picking up a box every so often, just at the scenery, one of the small boxes, and building a building in an evening, and it would give me a sense of peace. It was great. And now I have an entire city that I can destroy at a moment's notice. It needs to be painted. Um, yeah, I suppose that brings us to the next section. So the next question is, what I'm going to do next? Um, some shows are going to list hobby goals and even have some kind of crazy hobby challenge where they try and get stuff done within the before the next show. I'm going to be keeping it a lot more low-key. My aim is to briefly talk about what I want to get done and how I plan on doing it. Hopefully, I'll get some emails and feedback telling me why I'm doing it wrong, uh, which will make my life better. Um, anyway, so what I'm going to try and do in the next week or so is to paint a few of my buildings. I've just finished a Warlord, and I just need a break from the small detail. So I've got a couple of buildings that I've primed with a grey flat primer from Walmart. I'm going to hit them with poster paint, a variety of other greys, building a graduation of grayscale on them. And then I'm going to hit them up with some Dawnstone um, dry brush. Um, after that, I'm going to hit them with a contrast paint to give them a textured colour. I've done this before, and it looks really good. Um, I'm going to go through and pick out the metallic details and all the windows. Um, silver for the windows, a strong silver paint. So then I hit them up with a gemstone paint and it just makes it look like stained glass. Real nice looking. Anyway, theory, I can knock out a few of those buildings in the next week. Um, we'll see. I've got a lot of the buildings to do. Um, some are half done already. Some just need to be finished. I've probably got about four or five that I actually hit sealant with last year, which was real nice to get done. Um, I just want to get them done and sealed so I can keep keep them in a bad storage container when I ship them around. <laughs> I don't treat them as well as I should, probably. But that's a whole other debate about storage. Additionally, for hobby goals, I really need to finish reading Shadow and Iron. Uh, I skimmed it. I've read sections of it pretty detailed, but I want to do a cover-to-cover -cover read-through. Not only for this podcast, but for myself. This week's been a bit busy, uh, starting this podcast and a few other things in my life, so I just need to get down and get that done. Um, also, if I get bored of painting, I've got the transfers from Legio Incarnum. Getting a few of those on the Warlord and my other Titans probably will be a good thing to do. Uh, make it make me feel nice anyway. Spend all the money on the transfers, may as well use them. The God Engines Walk. This is going to be an irregular section of the show. Done together games I've played. As I've got no local players of Titanicus... All the games I play require a bit of planning and usually result in at least a three-hour drive. Well, last weekend I drove up to Oklahoma City to see my friends up there and I was able to get three games of Titanicus in. So, this is going to be me covering those games. Normally in the future I'm going to try and record in my car while I'm there or even at the table with the players I'm playing against. Uh, I wasn't able to do that this time. Timing wasn't quite right. So I'm just going to quickly go over the games I played. And in future episodes, I'm going to discuss in detail some of the observations I saw. Well, the first mission I played was a standard uh, match play battle. That we both used the same objective card to try and keep the game a bit more balanced. It was a, a retrieval mission. Uh, I was playing my Legio Incarnum list. Uh, it's just a Crusader list um, that I've made my own rules for Incarnum. I'm going to go over those in a future episode, but not today. Uh, for this game, we both used Maniples out of the Shadow and Iron book. Uh, my friend was running Legio Fortress with a half rupture Maniple. That's the two Nemesises and a Reaver. I was running the Manatum Maniple, which is the Warlord and two Warhounds. But I also took an extra close combat Reaver just to add it up. Um, game played pretty well. I made a stupid mistake at the start where I put my... Reaver on full stride. Um, I forgot how quickly we would close in because we were using close quarters deployment. So we kind of just ran forward and ended up being blasted to pieces by the two nemesises. It was over by the end of the first turn, he was down. Uh, but after that, the rest of my mana pool was able to take out one of the nemesises and the Reaver fairly handily. 
No, the game then dragged on as the warlord and the remaining nemesis just couldn't deal with each other, so they just ran around fighting each other for the rest of the game. The second game I played was a hold the line mission in the same format as before, standard match play, sharing the same objective. Um, my opponent this time was running a re half region mana pull of Legio Defensor, so two warlords and a warhound. Uh, this game was a little odd. Uh, first, first two turns, the Regium castled up in the center of the table, trying to hug a bit of cover. Um, my Titans pushed forward, and I took a bit of a beating, but nothing critical. And then in the second turn, or end of the second turn, start of the third, I was able to finally break through the Void Shields. Um, took out one of the Warlord's legs. Uh, it collapsed, fell into the other Warlord, taking out its legs causing it to go down, and then suddenly it was just a warhound left. Uh, at which point, my uh, opponent concedes. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a similar story for the Regia. It just, it's really good on paper. It's very strong when you cluster together. It's really hard to crack. But once it's cracked, they just go down so hard and so quick. It's, yeah. So for the last game of the day, we played the core book mission, The Martian Schism, Last Stand at Magnus City. We had two players on the side of Legio Mortis, two players on the side of Legio Tempest. The Mortis players were running a full Axiom Maniple and an Arcus Battleline Maniple, which is the new one from Shadow and Iron with the four Warhounds and the Nemesis Warbringer. Um, the Loyalist, my side, we ran a uh, half Mortis Maniple and a Corsair Maniple. A lot of Reavers was basically the plan. Now in this mission, the Mortis side has a thousand more points. And once we were deployed, it was very clear they had held the uh, advantage. And we knew the Loyalists were going to lose this game. I mean, it's in the nature of the game. Now, what we were playing is a four-player game where one side, when they, it was their turn to activate, could activate two Titans. So both Loyalist players would activate two Loyalist Titans. They then could target any enemy Titan except for the same one. So, for example, I could activate my Warlord. My other friend would activate one of the Reavers. We just had to target two separate Mortis Titans. Uh, this allowed basically both players to be active all the time. It's a great way to play a large game pretty quickly. We burned through the first two turns in about 20 minutes, which is really good for a 3,000 point game of Titanicus, as effectively it was more like two 1,000 point games. Anyway, so the first couple of turns were interesting. Um, the Traitors advanced towards the uh, Magma City. The Loyalists pushed forward on the flanks. I misplaced one of my Reavers again. It was day for it. And he ended up having to run away to get out of firing corridors and generally was kind of useless until the latter part of the game. And that became the story of the rest of the game as well. After the second turn, we started losing Titans. And once uh, the Loyalists started losing Titans, the Titan number advantage that the... Uh, uh, yeah, and then the game sort of just fell into that trap where it was just a matter of time before the Legio Mortis would have finished the Loyalist stuff. And that's kind of the problem with this mission. I really had a good fun, but as we moved into the seventh hour of Titanicus for me, I started getting a little tired. It had been a very long day, and I played two technical games earlier in the day, especially the first game. So as we dragged into turns four and five, I think we wrapped it up on turn five, yeah, their um, Mortis had clearly won, and it was just the enthusiasm to see how we got the last couple of engine kills kind of drained from all of us, um, which is a shame. I was having great fun, and I really enjoyed the uh, uh, narrative missions. But I think, in retrospect, playing multiplayer games uh, when you have different points values and sides is probably not the greatest idea, and something we're probably not going to do again in the future. I'm planning next month to head back up to OKC, um, hoping to pull out something very similar, try and cram another three or four games while I'm up there. Um, probably going to try and do another four-player game, or six if we get lucky and find the extra players. They probably won't do a narrative mission. Um, may try and formulate my own mission, um, something that will work for multiple players and uh, keep everyone engaged. And I think it'll be something that I'll talk about in future episodes of the show. Um, happy to take feedback from anyone out there in the community who's played large games who've uh, got ways to make it work um 
anything to make the game better. Yeah, and that probably about wraps up this segment. Um, Say, so next time I take, play some games, I'll record some more thoughts about them. Uh, but I really don't expect to be doing it again until middle of next month. So, thanks. So that brings us to the end of the show. I hope you enjoyed the first ever episode of the God Engine cast. This is a remastered recording, so I've recently re-listened to this show sitting here in April 2021, reflecting on the year that could have been. Overall, this show seems so hopeful. Um, It really is a shame what came in March with the oncoming pandemic. I actually haven't been back to that Games Workshop store I talked about there in the final section, and the Gun Engine Walks as a section is a section I have yet to resurrect in any of the next 50 shows of the God Engine cast. I played some games, but haven't really played enough games to talk about them. It's been a very weird year. But with that, I will close out the show. If you enjoyed this show, please rate and review, leave a like. If this is a YouTube video, write a comment, and spread the word of the show if you wish to support the show you can go to my patreon account and subscribe i have numerous different options available to folk or you can buy me a coffee on ko-fi.com all the links are found in the show notes to this and i will see you again on the next one i wish you all well and good fortune Thank you again for listening to another episode of the God Engine Cast, a podcast dedicated to discussing the Adeptus Titanicus game produced by Games Workshop. This show was written, recorded, and edited by Martin Emery. This podcast is completely unofficial and no way endorsed by Games Workshop Limited. No challenge to any trademarks or copyrights are intended. All rights are reserved by their respective owners. If you have questions for the show, please email me at god.engine.cast at gmail.com or reach out to me through Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, where I am the God Engine Cast. Until next time, I wish you all well and good fortune.